This edition of Mac Voices is sponsored by Smile, the makers of world-class software like PDF Pen for Mac, PDF Pen Pro for Mac, PDF Pen for iPhone and iPad, PDF Pen Scan Plus for iPhone and iPad, Text Expander for Mac, and Text Expander for iPhone and iPad. Learn more about all their great products at smilesoftware.com. And by Mac Voices Magazine, our free Flipboard magazine that brings you some of the best Mac, iPhone, and iPad productivity tips on the web. High in signal, low in noise, just like Mac Voices, Mac Voices Magazine includes information on how you can get more out of your Apple technology. Subscribe at macvoices.com slash magazine or search for Mac Voices Magazine on Flipboard. Welcome to the Mac Jury on Mac Voices. This is the talk of the Apple community, and I'm Chuck Joyner. Folks, this is the very first of our holiday gift shows for 2016. These are always some of, they're, they're definitely our most fun shows. Uh, they're certainly among the most popular shows because we get to pick cool things and talk to cool people and, you know, what could be better? So this time, in, in case you haven't been here for one of our gift shows before, the rules are pretty simple. Pretty much anything tech-related is is what we encourage, but anything really is fair game. Um, I, my my ideal description is anything that plugs in uh, or has a power switch is is the idea. Um, the only rules for the Mac jury, other than that, are that uh, subsequent panels can't pick what anything anything that the previous panels picked. So this is the very first one, so we have no restrictions. So I have no idea what's going to come out of this, but we're going we're going to have some fun. So here we go. This is who's uh, who's going to make up the first of your holiday panels. Um, first, from right to left on my screen, Dr. Robert Carter. Robert, it's good to have you. Thanks for being here. Well, thank you, Chuck. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to be back, and I'm so happy to be part of the first one because I can say whatever I want and nobody said it already. Exactly, exactly. Uh, tell For the folks that may not know you, but they will after this, um, where, where, do you, where do you come from and what do you do? Okay, well... I do a podcast along with a co-host named Allison Hartley called the Tech Doctor Podcast. It's at dr-carter.com. And it's a podcast all about Apple and primarily about Apple accessibility. We're really big on helping people make use of the accessibility tools that are fortunately built into all of the Apple devices. And uh, I myself am a uh, person who is blind. So I use the voiceover screen reading technology. And uh, that's what we primarily do, although we, we uh, do dip into other technology as well, but it's primarily Apple accessibility. Terrific, terrific. Well, it's great to hear, have you here. And, you. and Robert, I'll tell you a little secret. I, I really wanted you on this jury because I need help keeping our other two panelists under control. And I well, think, in my in my other life, I'm a psychologist, so I'm totally unqualified to do that. Oh my God, that's perfect. That's exactly why I wanted you here. <laughs> Next up, uh, Mr. Peter Cohen. <laughs> Peter, it's great to have you. Thanks for being here. Yeah, I need a psychiatrist, so I don't think uh, I don't think Robert can help. Oh well, that's too bad. That's too. I can bad. help you with a referral, though. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> uh, Peter, what? Where are you hanging your hat nowadays? I am managing editor of the blog at backblaze.com. Backblaze is a leading provider of, uh, of uh, uh, backup, uh, cloud backup services and uh, cloud storage. Uh, so if you need to put stuff online or if you want to back your machine up uh, safely and securely to the cloud, we can help you do that. I uh, uh, run the blog over there and uh, have a great time doing it. I, In a previous life, I was a tech journalist with uh, Macworld, iMore, The Loop, and uh, pretty much anybody else who will pay me, um, and uh, uh, still do that on occasion on a freelance basis. Um, and uh, yeah, that's that's me. That's great. That's great. And if I remember correctly, just uh, in the last few days, you published your the annual report of uh, hard drive reliability. Actually, the quarterly report, our quarterly. Q3 uh, uh, drive stats. Yeah, our most popular uh, blog post by far is our drive stats post. Uh, Backblaze. Um, it, it, has uh, a data center that's populated with storage pods and storage vaults. And uh, these devices are basically giant RAID arrays uh, comprising 
um, the same sort of uh, off-the-shelf uh, hard disk drives that you might buy for uh, your own computer. Um, so uh, we use over 60,000 of them. Uh, which gives us some level of authority when we start talking about uh, when drives fail. Uh, so people are very interested in those quarterly reports, and you're absolutely right, Chuck. We just published our uh, our third quarter um, uh, drive stats post, and uh, it's it's got some interesting info in there. The biggest thing that we did this past quarter was migrate from um, two terabyte systems to eight terabyte systems. Uh, so we've got an early report on how reliable those eight terabyte HGST uh, hard dri- hard drives that we're using are, and and that kind of falls in very well with our topic here because if you're shopping for hard drives over the the holidays, you may want to go and take a look at that report and see you know what the trends are as far as not just the manufacturers but also the sizes. I think there may be some surprises there for you. Absolutely, it's always good to have you, Peter. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Last but absolutely not least, I'm not quite sure what kind of help she needs, Ms. Kelly Gumont. Kelly, good uh, to have you. Whether I need help or not, I'm really interested in hearing Robert tell Peter where to go. So <laughs> that's going to be fun later. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> I, I assume mm. you were talking about with the referral part, Kelly. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. As opposed to rhetorically? Yeah. Well, I don't, it's early yet. I, I can't say for sure. By the, by the end, Robert may be happy to tell both you and I where to go. <laughs> I'm not really sure. <laughs> he may tell me where to go for inviting him to this <laughs> Kelly, what do you think? thing that a psychologist learns to do is be a good listener. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly, what are you up to these days? Uh, I am the director of social media for Smile Software, and I also do support for them. And the rest of the time, I occasionally write a thing or two over at MacObserver.com. And uh, in semi-breaking news, because it went live yesterday, Uh, Don Melton and I have started a podcast about Westworld that you can pick up over at The Incomparable. So, Okay, so first of all, let's be clear that Westworld is the HBO series, uh, in case somebody's been living on Mars. And also, I'm going to let you say who Don Melton is so folks understand why he's involved in this. (laughs) Well, I know Don as um, one of my... It, an old crabby dude on Twitter to whom I am partial, um, which is basically his description of himself all the time, too. So um, Don is a guy that used to work at Apple. Peter can probably elaborate more on what uh, on what exactly it was that he did there. I know Don because he will complain about stuff on Twitter and I'll go, yeah, or you know, say something funny about it. And then sometimes when I complain, he will do the same to me. And he was complaining about people not realizing that the book, like back in the day when they made the Westworld movie with Yul Brenner, that the book was a novelization of the script, which Michael Crichton also wrote, not the book came out and then they made a movie based on the book. And I said, I thought everybody knew that was a thing. And he went, no, hardly anybody knows that's a thing. And I said, well, fine, then I'm going to start a podcast and you can come on it and talk about Westworld with me. And he, and then he messaged me the next day and was like, so when are we going to record this? <laughs> and now we have a podcast. <laughs> yeah. Don made this obscure piece of software. I don't know if you've ever heard of it called Safari. Uh, I think somewhere along the line. Yeah. 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 And WebKit. WebKit. He was responsible for WebKit. WebKit too. Yeah. WebKit was the one I was thinking of that I couldn't remember. So, um, um yeah, he's he's an old school Apple guy. Um, he Good. probably had the office next to Sal's office made. Sal's <laughs> oh, office oh, rest in yeah. peace. Oh boy! Oh, yeah. now oh. you're making me sad, Kelly. Oh. Yeah. yeah, let's not go well, there. I'll cheer you up by by standing up and showing you my shirt. Says the periodic table of pirates. How's that? Yes, pirates. <laughs> I want one of those. <laughs> All right, it's awesome. Yeah. It's, <laughs> So let's do this. Um, we're going to do three or four rounds, depending on timing and how much we have. Um, <laughs> and, and you know, our guests are going to explain what they're picking and why they're picking. And Robert, since this is your first ever panel, I want to give you the very first pick of 2016. What do you have Ooh, for that, us? That is an awesome honor. I am going to pick the thing that has just really captivated my living room enjoyment for the last year, and that's the Sonos wireless speaker system. And I have so enjoyed my Sonos. They sell several different wireless speakers, and the thing that I love about them is you can simply plug your Sonos into power, and it will 
go out and find your Wi-Fi network and connect. You, you connect everything using a, an easy-to-use app on your phone or your computer. And these speakers require no wires, and you operate them from your your device, and you can control the Sonos in your living room or any, any other room in the house you have speakers in. And I, I they have several different models. I bought two of their Play 5 speakers, which are their larger speakers, and then I kept whining and begging my wife until she allowed mm-hmm. me to buy the uh, the this, this sound bar they have called the play bar. And finally at the, so I think in June, maybe I added the the sub. So I have a complete Sonos system and I am really loving it. It sounds great. It's easy to operate. And it's just made my enjoyment of listening to music so much greater that I would encourage everybody to consider some part of a Sonos system as a possible holiday gift. That's that's such an awesome uh, recommendation, Robert. I have, I have pretty much. It sounds like you're you're set up in the living room, with the exception that I have two play ones for rear speakers. So I have a, a surround system that way, and and it's just the easiest surround system you're ever going to have, because it just plugs into the wall. You know, everything else is wireless. So it's fantastic. Good job. Good good great first pick right out of the box. Thank you, Peter. How about you? What's first well, for you? Uh, let's see. I'm going to go, I think, expensive to cheap this year. Does that sound good, Chuck? That sounds great. <laughs> okay. So at uh, the top of my list is um, an offering from Apple. And no, it's not a new MacBook Pro. Um, okay. No, it's, it's, it's nothing extravagant. But Well, I guess kind of extravagant. But what I really want... Uh, under the Christmas tree or under the Hanukkah bush this year is a set of Beats Solo 3 wireless um, headphones in what Apple calls ultraviolet. They're purple. Ooh. Yes, they're $299. Um, and if you're lucky, uh, you might be able to find them elsewhere for less. I think Amazon's actually running a sale right now on some of the Solo 3s. Um, what makes the Solo 3s really cool is that they're one of the first uh, sets of uh, of headphones from Apple that uses the W1 chip. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is the new wireless chip that uh, powers uh, these, the Powerbeats, and also uh, the as-yet-to-be-released, as of this recording, uh, AirPods from Apple. Uh, so so uh, they provide an incredible amount of, uh, of, of wireless power, apparently 40 hours between charges. But the purple is to die for. I've seen it at the Apple Store. I've seen. I actually haven't seen the cellos out of their box yet, but I have uh, played with the Urbeats a little bit, which are um, uh, the wired uh, in-ear uh, earbuds that uh, that Beats makes that are the same color. And I have a purple fetish, um, and th- this is definitely high on my list of things that that, that I would really love. Now, I prefer, as uh, people who are watching the video can attest to right now, uh, I prefer over-the-ear headphones, uh, which has made my colleague Jim Dalrymple call me Princess Leia on any number of podcasts. <laughs> uh, an appellation I wear proudly, especially now knowing that uh, Carrie Fisher and Harrison Ford carried on a torrid affair during the filming of Star Wars. Uh, but um, I really do prefer an over-the-ear headphone because I don't find that any earbud that I've ever um, uh, used sits in my ear comfortably. Inevitably, I end up getting earaches or they fall out um, or they just don't fit right or I feel icky because something's in my ear, like, you know, the SETI eel from Star Trek II. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, and I just don't like that feeling. So I really prefer something, uh, to cover my ears completely. Um, and, and that is, uh, uh, the real benefit of the solos. The fact that they're wireless, uh, make it all the better because I like to go out for runs every day. Um, and, uh, especially after shattering the screen on my iPhone 6 Plus twice, I really don't like to take my iPhone with me anymore. So I just loaded up my Apple Watch with some music. But that means having uh, or needing a a set of Bluetooth um, uh, headphones to be able to enjoy it. So Beats Solo 3 Wireless and Ultraviolet is my first pick. Wow. That's impressive for so many reasons, not the least of which is that you got both a Star Wars and a Star Trek reference in the same pick. (laughs) 
<laughs> good job, good job, Peter. It's a high I, bar. I, I have to ask. There's been so much controversy over over the, sorry, but the quality of sound of Beats headphones is that is that discussion a thing of the past, um, or is, does this have the trademark um, bassy bass heavy uh, Beats sound? My experience with Beats products is that the studios um, tend to manipulate uh, sound a little bit more than some of the other ones. Solos are pretty lightweight, <clears throat> and uh, they don't have active noise cancellation, I don't think. Um, so uh, the, 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 the sort of sound reproduction, I think, is a little bit truer. Oh, I should also point out, by the way, that you can use them with a cord. A cord is in the box, and you know if you're, uh, you know, not able to use them with your Bluetooth device for some reason, or if they're um, they're they're running low on juice, you can just plug them in and use the cord as well. Uh, you, so you don't have to go wireless. Uh, but yeah, and I, I think that the, the solos sound really good um, compared to <clears throat> at least the you know the, the versions that I've tried uh, compared to some of the other uh, Beats products. Great, great. Good good first pick. And it's an Apple product to boot. Cool. Kelly, round one. Where where are you taking us? Um, well, I'm gonna start with something that sounds really boring, but it's the kind of gift that when you get something like this, it it ends up being really useful. At least that's what I've discovered in giving people gifts like this. And it is the Kanex, K A N E X, dual port USB charger. And the reason I'm picking this one in particular is because when you plug it into the wall, like if this was a wall charger, when you plug it into the wall, usually what happens is the USB cords come out the back and hang out. And then like with an iPad charger, for example, the iPad charger is, you know, an inch thick or whatever. And then the USB cord is additional clearance. So if you're trying to plug something in behind the bed or in the corner of something, you know, some place where you don't want something sticking out really far, then you end up with like all this that you have to worry about clearance with and you have to move the dresser forward or whatever it is. And with this one in particular, the USB ports are on the bottom of the device. So all the thicker it is, is what plugs into the wall and then the cords come out the bottom of it. So you don't have to worry about it. It also has enough juice to charge two iPads at the same time. And uh, and uh, I think if this is the one I'm thinking of, it only comes in black. There are some that come in a white and a black version. I picked this one because it's a, a, a name of a company I recognize. You can There are many of them on Amazon. We've seen, uh, you know, sketchy sort of chargers and things that go by on Amazon before. Uh, this is from a, sort of a known quantity, and it's uh, $10 directly from their website. And uh, that's why I like it, because it makes it a little bit easier to have um, – your iPhone and your Apple watch charge in the night, you know, like overnight on your nightstand. And the nice thing about it is it makes sort of a good auxiliary gift too. So if someone, if you know that someone at your house, you know, um, you're getting mom an iPad, you're getting the kids an iPad or an iPhone or a watch. And now somebody has a need to charge two things at the same time and can't just use the charger that came in the box anymore. Then this gives you an opportunity to have sort of a piggyback gift to go with that. Hmm. Very nice. I didn't. I have not seen this, I, and I've, I've run into exactly the problem you're talking about with cables sticking out everywhere. So they end up like what four or five inches, you know, mm -hmm. of space that is required. So good job, good job. Yeah, I love it. One, of course, these these shows always end up costing me money too. That's the problem. <laughs> well, this is a ten dollar one, so most of mine aren't uh, going to be super expensive ones. But that one I thought was really great. So. Well, Robert and Peter made up for you, so don't worry. <laughs> they did indeed. Yeah, my, my wallet's already empty. My yeah. my first round pick. You know, I like versatile gifts, and nothing is more versatile than cash. But cash is no fun. So this is going to be a versatile pick and sort of a PSA um, kind of pick, public service announcement. Uh, and that is my traditional Apple gift cards, iTunes gift cards, um, for a lot of reasons. First of all, around this time of year, in fact, as we record this, I saw the first one of the season, you can get them for up to 20% off. Usually 15%, 20% is what you're looking for. And it's just like free money. Because you're, you're going to be buying apps in the App Store. You're going to be buying music. 
you're going to be buying TV shows, movies. And so it's a 20% discount on anything you buy. Um, but more than that, you can also use this to pay for Apple Music, I believe. You can use this to pay, I think, even for some of your iCloud storage, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I haven't done that yet, but I've, I've been told by people that have done it that you know that's a way to do it. So it's just a way to spend, say, $80 and get $100 worth of value. Uh, I usually keep I mean, if I'm, well, I'm not embarrassed to say because that's just the way it works out. I usually keep a couple hundred dollars worth of credit in the in, in iTunes, just waiting for me to spend it. But that two hundred dollars has cost me only a hundred and sixty dollars um, because I've gotten the discounts. So mm -hmm. you gotta you gotta really watch um, over the especially over the the Black Friday holiday for these deals and jump on them quick because they do sell out quick. But if you can score it. You've just saved yourself 20% on just about anything you can buy in the iTunes store. So there you go. Cool. It's it's not it's not it's a it's a it's a very um, practical pick. I like practical. So that's round one, and wow, a lot of diversity in that one. <laughs> um, Robert, we'll just keep the same order if that's okay, and ask you to kick us off with round two. Well, Chuck, I'm going to pick the Apple Watch. And for a few reasons, honestly, first of all, I'm excited to be able to pick it because I, I have been one of those people who have really enjoyed and loved my Apple Watch from the very beginning. But I, I didn't quite feel comfortable recommending it last year at Christmas time just because I thought I, I really like it. But it's got some sluggishness and like a lot, of the, a lot of the apps don't work that great. And if I recommend it and somebody who's not a huge Apple fan the way that I am might get it, might not like it as well. But this year, they have really done a fabulous job with Watch OS 3 of making the operating system work a lot more smoothly, a lot faster, really do the things easily that most of us have found we like to do on the watch, replace the friends uh, button with, with a dock, which to me makes a lot of sense. And plus, they came out with some new hardware this year with the watch uh, series two, and it's now very water resistant and uh, is great for people who are doing fitness things. And, and I also use mine all the time for giving me the ability to get silent alarms or silent alerts when, when things are coming in and it doesn't disturb anyone else. And yet I'm notified with a tap on my wrist. And so for anybody who has an iPhone and doesn't have an Apple Watch. I just think it, this year is a nice time to think about that as a possible gift. So that's that's uh, that's my pick for round two. Uh, Robert, um, any particular the Series Zero, Series One, Series Two? Um, what, what, I don't know what you're wearing, and and what do you do you have a strong feeling one direction or another? Well, I've still got the Series Zero, um, just because I chose to spend. All, all the money I may, all the extra money I may have for quite a few whiles on the new MacBook Pro. So it's still a <laughs> Series Zero watch for me. But you know, I, I honestly, if I were going to buy one now, I would certainly recommend the the Series Two. I just think it just probably doesn't make unless you just want one and can't come up with the cash for the Series Two. I just think it doesn't make much sense to to buy anything but but the latest one, honestly. I'm going to disagree with, with with Robert for a moment. I think the Series 2 is really great if you need waterproof or uh, if you need GPS on on, uh, on on your wrist. But otherwise, the Series 1 is an awesome value now for 200 bucks. You know, it's, it's, it's a better value than ever, and it's such a useful device with WatchOS 3. I'm just going to throw that I out. I agree. Yeah, I agree. I, I, we don't disagree on that. Yeah. It just depends on how much money you have to spend and how much, how you want to spend it, I guess. Yeah. And whether you're going to wear it in the shower. Yeah. <laughs> Small. Well, you know, Tim, I remember Tim Cook saying that he wore his original Apple Watch in the shower. But, you know, if, if he burned out his Apple Watch, I don't think it's a big uh, financial burden for him to go get another one. <laughs> I suspect not. Yeah. <laughs> I think he knows someone. <laughs> yeah. That might That might be. Yeah. Great pick, Robert. Great pick. Okay. Um, Peter, round two. All right. Let's see. I have, um, well, you know, 
I, I'm going to put on my backup hat for a moment. Now, we at Backblaze feel very strongly about what we call the three, two, one backup philosophy, which is that you should always have three copies of uh, your data at any given time. There's the live copy that's on your Mac. There's a local backup, like a time machine backup that you can restore from right away if you need to, and then a backup in the cloud. Whether you're using Backblaze or CrashPlan, Carbonite, uh, iCloud Drive, Dropbox, I, I, you've got a copy of your most important data. That's the most important thing. Or that those three things are the most important things. So if you don't have a local backup, what are you supposed to do? Well, uh, there is a new offering from Seagate that I'm very excited about because Seagate builds it as the world's largest capacity mobile drive. It's a five terabyte drive uh, that they're offering now, um, and it, it retails for 189. That's their price for it, so um, you should be able to find it on the street, as they say, for less. Uh, but it is the first device to ship with Seagate's new Barracuda five terabyte drive inside of it. So it is massive. And if you've got a lot of data that you need backed up, if you've got, for example, like I do a MacBook Pro with an external hard drive that you use for storage because the, the Retina MacBook Pros only have SSDs and you've got a limited amount of storage, you may not have a time machine backup that's big enough for everything right now. So that makes it great. It's USB 3.0, so it'll connect with anything as long as you don't mind buying the dongle for your new touch bar <laughs> MacBook Pro. Yeah. Um, and it's very sleek. It's only about 20.5 millimeters um, uh, uh, tall. So it's, 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 it's a nice compact drive, uh, very big, um, very big capacity. It's, it's sort of like a, uh, that scene from Aladdin. Where uh, Genie says uh, infinite cosmic power, itty bitty living space. That's um, that. That's sort of what we're dealing with here, um, uh, and uh, yeah, it'll work great with time machines. So that's my that's my number two pick. That's that's a great pick, and you know it it wouldn't be a Mac jury if we didn't use the word backup because it's so important. <laughs> it's on it's, it's it's always on all of our minds that we don't want to lose anything. So great pick, but five terabytes. Wow. That's that's impressive. Yeah. yeah. That's impressive. <laughs> okay, Kelly, what do you have for round two? Well, I'm going to um, piggyback a little bit on the backup recommendation because this is a gift that that is both good to give and to receive. So for us on the show, for most people listening to the show, part of probably what Christmas time is, is uh, going home and doing tech support for everybody. And if that's the case then the thing that will make your life easier is if you just subscribe your family, whoever they are, get them subscribed to an online backup service because you okay. don't have to do anything. I'm partial to black backblaze. I pay for one service and it's, and it's backblaze, um, five bucks a month. They have gift subscriptions. Peter can totally tell us the deal on that. Um, and the thing that I love about that is that um, when you get it set up for somebody who's not as technically savvy, all you have to do is say, it puts this thing in the menu bar. It may alert you once in a while if your hard drive is full, but that's it. That's that's all it's for, and you're good. And, and then I know that you have a backup. So like worst case, if my mom's MacBook is struck by lightning tomorrow – I can go buy her a new MacBook, get it restored from the Backblaze backup, and then take her a computer that's exactly what she had before hers got struck by lightning today. And that's awesome. And it makes me feel better because I know that the people who are my personal tech support projects don't, I don't have to worry about whether or not they're going to lose stuff because I know they're not because they're all hooked up. And it's five bucks a month and like, and you know, you can always pitch it as like, this is your monthly tech support fee. This is what you pay to make sure that every time you call me for help, I'm able to help you <laughs> because I know you're not going to lose anything. And I've had to sort of push that a little bit. But now I know if something happens to my mom's computer, pictures that have been scanned or, um, you know, pictures that have been sent to her by by other people in our family or whatever she's got all that and she's not gonna have to worry about losing any of it and for me 
that makes me feel better. And it makes my mom feel better to know that she's not going to lose anything. And it, and it, it's super, super helpful. And, you know, I, every time I go, I make sure and plug her phone in, do a backup via iTunes. So like absolute worst case, I know that that iTunes backup is also getting put in, in as part of her cloud backup. So I know if something bad were to happen to her phone, I can always restore that too. So it sounds like this is a pick not just for your mom or for your what do you call it your uh, your personal tech support projects, but yes. <laughs> but also also for you as well because it makes your life easier. So exactly a double duty pick, precisely. Very nice, very nice. Okay, I just want to put one plug in also for Backblaze in the fact that I use it as well, and for people who need or care about these things, Backblaze is one of the few online backup systems that is very very accessible. The, the apps, the, the iOS app, the, the, the Mac app, you know, Backblaze re really, really works well with, with VoiceOver, for example. Ooh, good to know. Thank you, Robert. That's good to know. I, I, I swear I did not pay Robert or <laughs> Kelly for this testimony. <laughs> no. But thank you. Thank you both very much. I, I was a, 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 a customer for years before I got hired by the company, and I can't say enough good things about the service. Great. Okay. So we have we – have, uh, a universal testimonial. I like it. <laughs> well, my second round pick is uh, this. This is a USB-C dock from Satichi. Um, uh, it's something that we're all going to need sooner or later. Um, I got this because of having a MacBook. That's why it's uh, the the darker gray to match my MacBook. Um, it's, it's a pass-through USB-C uh, 3. So it will. I can plug this in and still plug a charger into it. My my uh, my laptop will get charged, uh, but it also has an SD card slot and a micro SD card slot, and two USB or regular USB uh, three, sorry, <laughs> USB three um, ports. Um, I can tell you it works wonderfully with the MacBook. I have not tested it with the MacBook Pro, the new MacBook Pro yet, because mine is not here yet. But I see no reason that it shouldn't work. Um, but note the, the small size. Some of the ports you're, you're, the docks you're seeing come out are quite a bit larger, and they offer a lot more features. They're also quite a bit more expensive. This is extremely affordable. Drops in my backpack, and I don't even know it's there until I need it, um, and it's going to eliminate the need for at least some dongles. So if you consider this a dongle, now well, you know, then it's just one more. But it does a lot of do double duty, and it's it's given me on, with my MacBook the ability to use some of my legacy hard drives now. Legacy hard drives they weren't legacy before before that, <laughs> um, but it, it's just a versatile little thing. Um, I, I, I'm not a real big believer necessarily in the specs and the transfer speeds and all. I want the real world, how it feels. And it feels just like if I plugged one of those old older drives into an older MacBook. Um, you know, no, no significant delay. Copying is just fine. Charging seems to be just like if I put plugged it, uh, the, the, the charging cable straight into the Mac. So it's just a great little, great little uh, thing. So... So, Chuck, I've got a question about that. Yeah. Um, it, it, do I under – and as you're, as you're kind of uh, showing it to the camera, I'm guessing that all of the business uh, is is on one end and then just it's just the connector on the other end? Correct. Yeah. Okay, cool. Because I know that with the new MacBook Pros, you've got – depending on which model you've got, you've got either two or four USB-C or Apple wants to call them Thunderbolt 3 ports. So I'm assuming that that could – or, or the, the, all the cables are going away from the computer at that point. Correct. They are. Now, what I, if, if you, and again, I'm holding it for the camera for those of you that are watching the video, there's not a lot of space here between the, 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 uh, the USB plug and the end. So I'm thinking that there should not be any trouble with it plugging it in and blocking any of the other ports, or at least any ports to the, to the left of it. So if, if you understand what I'm saying, which I'm not doing a great job of it, but they're gonna, they're, there are theoretically two ports on the new MacBook that you're going to be able to plug this in and not block off any of the, the other one on that side. But what's cool about that one way or the other is you, you've essentially got a port replicator. So if you've got all your stuff on your desktop and then you just plug it in, right? then you can just take your MacBook or your MacBook Pro, take it out, do whatever you want with it, and then come back, and then you're just plugging that one thing in instead of having to plug 
five mm-hmm. dongles or, th- or four dongles into your machine. Right, right. To get all that functionality. So that's really cool. Yeah, it's it it, nice. It, it, it's, it's a nice, I mean, it's, again, you know, there, there are going to be things that come with more ports and uh, I'm sure HDMI adapters and VGA adapters and all. But for, you know, for carrying something around, when you might need more storage, uh, if you're carrying that in your backpack too, this is this is perfect. It just does not add a lot of weight or hassle. So the Satichi uh, USB 3 pass-through uh, dock. Smile and their amazing suite of productivity software are sponsoring today's edition of Mac Voices. Smile helps you get more done with PDF Pen, available in various flavors for Mac and iOS, PDF Pen Scan Plus for iOS, and Text Expander for Mac and iOS. Get all the details at smilesoftware.com. PDF Pen and PDF Pen Pro are the choice for editing and manipulating PDFs on your Mac. With PDF Pen, you can do things that you would expect with a PDF editor. Mark up PDFs, sign and fill out forms, add and edit images to PDF documents, create tables of contents, and securely redact information so it can't be read. You can also do some things you might not expect. Things like add file and audio attachments to your PDFs, digitally sign your documents with self-signed certificates, and export your PDFs to Microsoft Word for further editing or manipulation. You know those PDFs you received that were created by a scanner in someone's office? You can run optical character recognition on them to turn them into text that is fully editable. PDF Pen Pro adds the ability to create links from URLs, create PDF portfolios, export to Microsoft Excel and PowerPoint, add and edit permissions, and much more. With all that, Smile is not sitting on their laurels. PDF Pen 8.2 was recently released with the ability to sync all windows and tabbed windows on Mac OS Sierra. That enhances PDF Pen's support of cloud syncing using either iCloud, if you bought through the iOS App Store, or Dropbox, no matter where you purchased. I'm betting that pretty much anything you want or need to do with PDFs can be done with PDF Pen. But you need to find out for yourself. Visit smilesoftware.com right now to download a trial version of PDF Pen, check it out, and decide if PDF Pen suits your needs or if the extra features of PDF Pen Pro are for you. No matter which version you select, you're on your way to being more productive. And don't forget about PDF Pen for iPhone and iPad, the version that brings some of the most frequently used PDF editing capabilities to iOS. That's PDF Pen, PDF Pen Pro, and PDF Pen for iPhone and iPad, all from Smile, the makers of world-class software. Smile is the longest-running sponsor of Mac Voices, and I appreciate them just as much as you do. Thank you, Smile. So that's two rounds, guys. This uh, and, and we've already got a lot of diversity here. Um, Robert, I'm just going to keep the same order and ask you to uh, kick us off for round three. Okay, you probably just cost me money with that USB <laughs> dock, so okay. Good, I'm Fair not the only one. Okay. Yeah. So I am going to pick something that might be a little bit surprising, but I have a lot of people asking me about Bluetooth keyboards. And last time I was in the Apple store, I had the chance to take a pretty good long look at the, I think they call it the Apple Magic Keyboard, which I'm not so sure about the name, but nonetheless, I thought it was a really nice keyboard. I liked it uh, quite a bit better than the original Bluetooth Apple keyboard because it now has an on-off switch, which I think is really helpful as opposed to a button you push, which always gets pushed when it's in your backpack and you don't want your keyboard coming on. But these keyboards are really very useful if if you have uh, iOS devices, if you have Apple TV, if you have a Mac even that you might we want a, re- a keyboard that you don't have to be right next to your computer to control the computer with. Uh, these are really useful to have, and I think that this Apple uh, Magic Keyboard is going to work really well with all of the other Apple devices, of course. That's what it was designed for, and and I don't know. I'm sure there are, there are cheaper ones out there, but I really liked the feel of this keyboard. And I, I just think if people want a good, sturdy Bluetooth keyboard that they can carry around and use with all their Apple devices, this, this in my opinion, is a good one. Hmm. That's, that's intriguing, um, especially the idea that you're, you're advocating, and I'm very serious about this, uh, advocating carrying around a keyboard. Is that, is that something that you fits your particular needs, Robert, or do you think that's something that everyone should consider? Well, if you're going to – a lot of people, I would think if they want to do some serious writing or editing on their phone or maybe their 
their iPad. They might really enjoy being able to type on a really nice Bluetooth keyboard. I am not going to say that I practice what I preach most of the time. I carry one around sometimes, but, but, but I do think there is a place for that. I carry around a crappy Bluetooth keyboard and I work with that a lot because I find that because I've spent so many years touch typing on a physical keyboard that moving to the glass on my phone or the glass on my iPad is hard. And in some cases I can't do it because particularly if I'm in a situation where I'm trying to take notes about a session at a conference or something, I need to be able to look up and pay attention and type without looking. And I can't do that on an iPad. I've tried, I've spent a ton of time typing on those kind of keyboard on the glass keyboard on screen and, and can't hack it. So I have, um, a nowhere near as nice as the Apple keyboard, little foldable, uh, keyboard. That's not much bigger than an iPhone. And uh, I drop that in my bag. And then if I really do need a keyboard for something, I can use that. So yeah, yeah I'm with, I'm with Robert on that one. Tell you what, if Apple ever gets to the point where it's got the the Taptic engine so finely tuned that it can simulate nubbins, <laughs> home row nubbins on, a, on the glass keyboard, then I might go glass only. But I am absolutely with you. You've got to have a physical keyboard if you're a touch typist, one way or the other. Yeah. Absolutely. People don't realize it, and I guess it's not as necessary now with the new Apple TV software, but sometimes it's really nice to have a Bluetooth keyboard connected to your Apple TV, it's especially if you enter a bunch of passwords. And, mm-hmm. and even if you're just browsing around, it's, it's easy to do with the arrow keys and escape for the, to get to different menus and all. Right on. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And Kelly, I, I have no idea what the one that you just showed costs, <laughs> but, but the Apple one is pretty darn affordable. Yeah, yeah, the Apple one. Is, um, the Apple one is. This is a uh, Matthias, one of the Matthias Bluetooth keyboards. Uh, mm. This is the the Quiet model, which is only uh, partially as clacky as the original full on Cherry Switch clacky keyboard, uh, which I have sitting over there. Uh, I just don't have it plugged in right now. And uh, I type on this like all the live long day. This is my daily driver. This little Bluetooth jobby, and I love it. Um, I do have an Apple keyboard. I don't like the action on the keys. I always feel like I'm ma- like hitting them a lot harder than I actually have to. And so uh, that's one thing I like about this keyboard is that the keys are a little taller and they press a little further. So my fingers don't end up feeling like I've just been beating them against a wall for half an hour when I'm done typing. So, Kelly, I, I, I just had inspiration. If you pull out the Matthias keyboard and you start typing on the show... I'm uh-huh. I'm going to nickname you Machine Gun Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> that one. That's what's sitting over there. Uh, the one that Peter's holding up. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Okay, the whole yeah, Machine Gun Kelly thing doesn't work for Peter, but you get the idea. <laughs> <laughs> but that is what I mean, it sounds like. And yeah, great. um, I have it and I love it. And uh, when I first got it, I took it out of the box and I set it all up. And I was typing on it. And my husband, the infamous Mr. Kelly, came running from like the opposite end of the house and was like, what is that noise <laughs> from the other end of the house? Like I got a new keyboard. So yeah. <laughs> mm. Um, it's my favorite keyboard hands down. Um, part of why it, it's actually part of why I end up sitting in a, with an external monitor and my laptop over there and an external keyboard is so that I can hammer on a keyboard that I really like to type on. Well, duh, you have to put your hands down to use the keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> okay, a lot of – Robert, you, you engendered a lot Flash of passion it, here. I um, did, and, and I know now we're going to know for sure if Kelly's using that keyboard on her new podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Peter, round two – or round three, excuse me. I'm, I'm getting behind myself. Round three. Let's see here. Okay, my next item is actually the same price as the Seagate uh, Backup Plus Portable that I just told you about, but it is so cool. It's called Flybricks, and it is um, a drone kit that uses Legos. I know! I know! It's so awesome. So if you place an order now, they're guaranteed that you can get them in time for Christmas. Okay. Um, But uh, the the deluxe deluxe kits are on back order. You probably won't get one in time for Christmas. But it works with regular Legos. It actually comes with a little Lego Pilot, too. And it comes with everything you need to get started. Uh, But basically, this is a kit that lets you build your own drones using Legos. How cool is that? 
Is it warm in here? Wow. I know. <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of stunned. So the obvious questions, Peter, I mean, what, what, what kind of uh, capabilities does that, the drone have? And if you tell me it flies, that's not adequate. You can build, <laughs> you can build hexacopters. That's copters with six rotors. You can build octocopters, all from a single kit. And they're rebuildable and they're crash friendly because they're made out of Legos. Because they're Lego. Mm -hmm. Wow. Exactly. So, so if, if you are interested in building and flying uh, your own drones without having to worry about, uh, you know, smashing it up and having it useless after 10 seconds, like, you know, my friend who bought a parrot, um, this is is awesome. Now, the, the software that operates it uh, works on Android or iOS. So, um, you know, if 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 it, it, it doesn't matter, uh whether or not the, the the kid or the person who's getting this has a has an iPhone or made the mistake of getting a Samsung, um, it, it, they'll 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 be able to enjoy it uh, just the same. And what's cool about it is that the 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 the, the software is open source. Um, the the deluxe kit is really kind of cool because it also includes a really neat um, uh, sort of video game like controller that you can use. Uh, but the regular kit. Um, works with uh, a software app that you install on your phone. Uh, it's available for 189, and it's just it's it's nifty. It's really nifty. Wow, for 189, uh, is it too mm. is it too much to ask? Is that that there be a camera module? Camera module. Uh, you know, uh, let's see here. Um, I'm actually checking their website now. I don't remember whether or not uh, there is. Um, I know that you can add Wi-Fi and GPS. I don't know about a uh, camera. I don't see one right offhand. Okay. Well, that's that's still cool. I mean, have have your have your kids build their own drone and then chase the dog around? I mean, that's fantastic. Yeah, and smashing it in a wall and bust it up and then just rebuild the thing because it's made out of Legos. Build it again. It's awesome. Yeah, that's 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 the best part. Mm. That's the best part. Oh shoot! I think you just cost me money, Peter. Darn. Yeah. 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 <laughs> All right. Kelly, can you top that for round three? Um, I'm not going to top it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to veer off in a totally different direction. Um, I'm going to choose something it, that from uh, Waterfield, sfbags.com for uh, people who don't know. Um, they make amazing backpacks and all sorts of bags and wallets and pouches. And if you are a tech writer, um, you always get a press release from them the day that Apple releases something new. And they're like, we have a new case for that. We have a new backpack that fits the new thing. And they started this new line um, a while ago now. They started a line called Peralta, which is for women. And so uh, they have one called the Abbey iPhone case. And it's fantastic. It comes in leather and it comes in water and stain resistant fabric if you like the fabric um it's super nice it's about i have one and I, I i forgot to grab it before we started the show it's uh larger than a six plus or a seven plus uh phone and uh it's got a pocket in the on one side for the phone and then it's got just a, an open sort of zipper pouch uh for the rest and the nice thing about it is that it's got this nice long strap that buckles onto the sides, it latches on both sides. So you can unlatch it and drop it in your backpack and have your purse with you in your laptop bag. If that's the thing you need to do, which I need to do pretty frequently. So I really like this bag. Um, I've taken it out in Portland rainy weather and it held up like a champ and, uh, the pouch for the phone is fuzzy and it sounds sort of boring, but it's like super functional. It looks nice. And it works exactly like I want it to. It, you know, it holds my phone. I think, I think the most stuff I ever put in it was um, a, a small square battery, like the lipstick charger style battery, uh, with a cable, um, lip gloss, my keys, a few cards, because there's a second pouch behind the iPhone for like a little flat pouch for a few pieces of plastic, so you can have your driver's license and your visa with you and a little bit of cash. And my phone, 
and managed to like get around comfortably. And then, um, like at conferences and things, I'll take this and then just drop it in my backpack and I can travel with my laptop and everything. It's super great. It looks nice. And it's actually like thoughtful. It sort of looks like a woman who needed to carry around her iPhone and a little bit of other stuff is who designed this and not a guy who thought he knew what a lady would want out of a purse. And with a lot of technology stuff, that can be a real problem. So this is really nice. Uh, you can get the leather version for $89 and the fabric version for $79. So that's my pick. Very nice. And they make, they do some amazing, amazing stuff. I mean, they're, it really is super high quality. It's, it's the yeah. kind of thing you aspire to in, in bags and cases and all. Oh, it, it totally is. Someday I'm going to have a water field. <laughs> Someday I will have a water field backpack of my own. I love the Tom bin that I have, but someday having one of those water fields would be really nice. Um, and they're made in San Francisco. Uh, I know the, the Peralta bags are, so that's another thing that sort of is a point in their favor that they're, um, made, made here. So you don't have to wait for it to ship from China or anything like that. Tell Mr. Kelly to uh, listen to the show and maybe he'll get some ideas. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have that one. So okay. I did get there. Okay. The backpack, though. But the backpack. Mr. Uh, well, Kelly I don't know. I've got to put the. I, I have to put the fly bricks on my Christmas list now, so oh, they boy. may bump the backpack this year. Yeah, yeah. Not, I, they bumped a couple things for me, no question. <laughs> um, I should. Uh, by the way, I just yeah. want to. I just want to throw out there. I am the proud owner of two, two Waterfield uh, backpacks. Ha ha, Kelly. Ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I've, I've got the stod. Um, uh, the, the, I, yeah. I'm a big believer in the stod, which is their uh, sort of slimline uh, backpack, and it is gorgeously made. The cool thing about Waterfield, by the way, for those who don't know, is that it was founded by a bike messenger who started the company because he was fed up with the crappy bags that he had to deal with. Um, so this is a company that really gets it. Um, and everybody who's ever seen my backpack, you know, the, or my backpacks, um, uh, think they look great and they've held up very well. I've, I'm, I'm very happy with them. So big thumbs up to Waterfield. Yeah, Definitely. they're really well made. Definitely. And if you get all excited about carrying your Bluetooth keyboard around, you can get a Waterfield case <laughs> for it. That's right. Yeah. Yes. That's the other great thing about Waterfield is like I said, they have like a custom, they have a custom pouch to slide your Bluetooth keyboard into whichever Apple one you bought. They, they have a coordinating one for your trackpad. If you carry your trackpad with you, they have one for your laptop. They like they're they're all over it and, and all their stuff is just fantastically built. Excellent. Excellent. So I'm going to take the third round and I'm going to close it out with uh, surprisingly an iPhone app um, or I guess iOS app. Um, and it's and even more surprisingly, it's a camera app. Um, it's called Camera Plus, and that's camera with the plus sign um, because there are a couple out there that are different. And if, if you're really not sure, I'll make sure I have a link in the show notes. I, I love this app for a bunch of reasons. Um, of, of course, it shoots in the, the iPhone version of, of RAW, um, and that's nice, and the controls are accessible and easy to deal with. But this deserves a little explanation. I'm not a big fan of filters. Um, I want to take a picture that looks like what I took a picture of. I don't want it to look like it came out of a 1940s Polaroid or something. You know, I want it to look good. This app has the one filter, though, that just seems to universally make everything look great. It's got a lot of other nice, really nice filters that simulate different exposures and all. But there's a filter on it called Clarify. And I have yet to take a picture that and that, that I use the filter on that people just don't look at it and say, wow, that is really impressive. It's it's not HDR, um, but it gives it a little bit of that look, but just everything just pops. And I've I've had several of my I took several of my pictures, had them printed up into 16 by 20s and have them displayed at home. And it never fails to evoke some kind of conversation about who took that? Where did you get that? And, you know, then I proudly say I took it and I don't tell them about the Camera Plus app and clarify. 
but it, it it literally is one touch and your photo looks amazing. What I'm going to do is right at this point, I'm going to try to drop in a before and after photo or two. Um, I'm not sure that, that after the compression, it'll really do them justice, but maybe it can give you a small idea of just what it looks like. Um, at the very least, it, it really makes pops. I believe the app's $2.99 in the App Store, so it's not, and that's $2.99, not not 200 so it's mm. it's just it's my favorite camera app it's the one i keep on my home screen now to just use as my default camera app for that very reason and if you're going to just post your pictures to social media i guarantee you it's going to up your up your game 100 percent. so I've, I've started sticking that some of these in my instagram feed but more importantly just just for me it's uh, it's the best one out, out there. And all these apps that have all these different filters, hey, if that's your thing, fantastic. But if you're looking for something that is is realistic or maybe just a little hyper-realistic uh, to make things pop, Camera Plus is the way you want to go. So, there. iOS app. First iOS app of the season. Right. Guys, I, do we, we have time for round four if you do. What do you think? Good? Sure. Yeah, okay. Robert, do you have a round four pick for us? I sure do. I'm going to pick a gift that is, isn't too expensive for once. It's the Apple Lightning Dock. And this is a very small, very sturdily built dock that just has li literally nothing more than a lightning port on the top of it. It has a, a place to plug in a lightning cable into the back, of course, and, and it has a headphone jack for everyone who's sadly missing their headphone jack with the new iPhone 7 or 7 Plus. But the Lightning Dock is is a really nice accessory. I have mine sitting by my bed, and I just stick my phone on it when I'm ready to go to sleep, and it charges all night. And it makes it very convenient, no cables in the way, nothing to worry about like that. And it's it, it's just – to me, it's very elegant in its simplicity, and it also works really well with all the iPhones that I've tried on. It they they seem to charge up fine and work just great with the Apple Lightning Dock. So I'm going to have that as my round four pick. Very practical pick. Do you keep uh, uh, Robert? Do you keep your phone like on this on the, at your bedside at night to charge? Is that how you uh, prefer to, to to charge it and hold it overnight? Yes, I do. Okay, and then in the dock. In the dock. In the dock. Okay, cool. Cool. Good. Very affordable. I like it. Peter, round four. Okay, my last one is uh, a really fun one, actually, and it's only 60 bucks. Assuming that you can find one. That's the trick, because this is a hot seller this, this, this holiday season. I'm talking about Nintendo's new NES Classic <sighs> Edition. Uh, the, the NES classic edition is something that is sure to thrill millennials anywhere on your list. Um, and lots of other nerds too. I, it is a, a recreation of the original, uh, Nintendo entertainment system, um, that, uh, uh, took the world by storm and it includes 30 classic games, uh, built in. Um, so this isn't something that you have to swap cartridges for like you did with the NES back in the day. Um, they're all burned right into uh, ROM on, on the device itself. And it's got games like Super Mario Brothers, Metroid, Pac-Man, Donkey Kong, The Legend of Zelda, Kirby's Adventure, and about 25 other games um, as well. Uh, and it, it's it's just awesome. It comes with one controller. It can support two because, of course, you could play uh, multiplayer games on that thing as well. Um, it also comes with an HDMI cable, so it's designed to hook up to, you know, newer televisions. Um, and, uh, what's really kind of cool about it is that it's got a CRT filter. So, uh, despite you, you can throw it on like a new 4k display and still make it look crappy with scan lines and everything, just like it used to back in the day. Um, and it is, uh, uh, you know, each pixel is a perfect square. So the, the games look like they're supposed to. Um, it just, it's a lot of fun. Um, and it's, it's, it's really, really cool. Uh, Mega Man 2, Final Fantasy, uh, Castlevania, Ninja Gaiden, um, uh, Double Dragon 2, uh, Gradius, Galaga, so many awesome games on this thing, uh, for 60 bucks. Uh, and there, there's, uh, 
no video game nerd on your list who won't flip out over this. Can get it at Amazon, Best Buy, GameStop, Target, Walmart, anywhere these things are sold, assuming you can find one. Like I said, very tough to get right now. They broke Amazon releasing this. Not even joking. It came out two days ago. And it like melted the section on Amazon where you could buy it because the free world was trying to get their hands on one. Wow. That's impressive. Yeah. That's impressive. Okay. For all you classic gamers out there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I know we have one in the house apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly, your, your fourth and final pick for this, this uh, show. My fourth and final pick is going to be uh, something that honestly will cost you uh, as much as you like. So um, lots of people have stuff. I have a lot of stuff. You guys all have a lot of stuff. And so sometimes it's hard to buy somebody more stuff or uh, like the categories I tend to use are, is this a present or is this a thing to dust? Like that I'm going <laughs> to buy somebody and they're going to have to dust it every so often and go, what am I going to do with this? I can't, Kelly, I can't throw it away, but I can't, you know, and I don't want to do that. And so sometimes, um, what I will do is charitable donation. So I will suggest any sort of charitable donation that is near and dear to you. Uh, the charitable donation that is near and dear to me is to donate to app camp for girls. And you can do that at appcampforgirls.org, number four, appcamp number four girls.org. And there's a big donate button there and you can go donate and, uh, you can donate five bucks. You can donate 500 bucks. You can donate 5,000 bucks. Um, whatever it is, you can, you can also donate in someone's name and then that person would get notified that you donated in their name. So, um, I really like this. This isn't, I know Chuck, this is well covered territory on your show. And I thank you for that. Um, App Camp for Girls is a week long camp that happens in the summer. We're up to six locations now where we spend a week teaching girls going into grades eight and nine about iOS development. And then they build an app and then they have to pitch their app to a panel of investors at the end of the week. And at the end of the summer, we take all of the quiz apps from all of the locations and we bundle them all together and we sell it. So you can also buy the quiz app, the quiz compendium on the app store for 99 cents. And you can take the quizzes and see the hand-drawn artwork and the, the questions that people came up with, the, uh, what kind of quizzes the girls were building. And... It's a lot of fun to do. It's so much fun to work on. I've been volunteering there for four years now. And I really, really like it. And it's one of those things that for a lot of people, I think um, it's it's a nice gesture because it's I'm, I'm still thinking of you and I'm doing something for you. But, you know, it's not a thing to dust. And so, uh, so that would be my pick is uh, to some sort of charity. And if there's something that's near and dear to you, it doesn't have to be app camp for girls. Like I said, I'm very partial. So. And Kelly, it may, it may be well covered on this show, but I don't think it can ever be covered enough. I, uh, app camp for girls is just an amazing thing. Um, of course, our friend Gene McDonald started it and uh, everything has fallen right into place and it just grows by leaps and bounds. There've been a lot of, uh, I'm not sure who was copying who, but uh, certainly at the very least they were inspired by this. So, yeah, great pick, great pick, and great cause as well. So I guess I have to do number four. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna recommend sort of a category, and then I'll I'll, I'll give a recommendation within that. Um, and it might not be something that you would expect. I'm gonna recommend that you purchase and use a dash camera for your car. Um, a couple reasons here. First of all, for those of you who don't know, I, I do work during the day in the insurance industry. And it's becoming more and more important, I think, to protect yourself with some kind of objective documentation of things that happen, at least in front of you. Um, and a dash cam does that. May be a good thing for you, may not be a good thing for you, but it will completely eliminate the he said, he said, she said, the light was green, the light was red, because you're going to have evidence of it. Um, these things are great because you can plug them into your your power port on your car, or you can have them hardwired into the electrical system. If you get the right ones, basically you set them and forget them. Uh, you turn them on, and they come on when the car turns on, and turns on turns off when the car turns off. They record on a loop so that you're not gathering up stuff you don't need, but 
the, the good ones will let you reach up and touch a button to save part of, say, the last couple minutes or, or longer of whatever happened. Um, we've all seen some of that cool stuff on, in social media about that were caught by dash cams. Um, and sometimes you, you catch some of the craziest things, and who knows, it may it may get you out of situation. Um, unfortunately, I had a friend who not long ago uh, was traveling at night, and someone tried to run her off the road. And the, the story has a happy ending, I'm happy to say, because she ha did have hands free, and she was able to call 911, got the police there, and they arrested the individuals. Um, but it's one of those things like it would be really handy to have something like this uh, as documentation of what's going on if you can't get to the police or a, a situation goes really bad. I did a Mac Voices briefing on the Garmin Dash Cam 10. Um, you can certainly find cheaper dash cams. And my philosophy is that you can buy cheaper dash cams, which seem to have little or no support, and that they may last you for several years or they may last you for several weeks um, with no support. And so that's one reason I decided on the Garmin, because I know Garmin and they have great tech support. Um, I've been using one now for about a year. And, you know, it's, it's not the kind of, after, after the first couple of days, you just forget about it being there right up until something happens in front of you. And then you just reach up, touch a button, and you've got to record for posterity or the lawsuit, whatever the case may be. So give it a look. I mean, again, you can get these very affordably and kind of get into it, find out if it's for you. Um, but I, I think it's a good thing to have as, as a fun thing. And if you happen to run across a meteor streaking across the sky or Bigfoot or something, you know, it, it's recorded right there for you. So check out the dash cams. Anybody have a dash cam? No, but I do have a dash cam app on my iPhone, which I've used on occasion. Uh, uh uh, elaborate, Peter. I don't know what a dash cam app is. It's an app that uh, uses the 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 eyesight camera, the rear facing camera on uh, the, the the phone. So if you've got a dashboard mount, which I do, um, it it will record video for you um, on your phone. Now, I, I wouldn't recommend using it unless your phone is plugged in for power, because any camera app is going to run down especially if it's recording video, uh, it's going to run down uh, your, 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 your iPhone battery pretty fast. And, you know, unless you've got the space for it as well. Uh, but the, the video or the app that I use in particular is called Dashcam. Um, and it's, it's fairly robust and gives you some, some good features, you know, in terms of uh, being able to loop or use the same uh, uh, storage space over and over again. So you're not just continuously recording video for hours and hours. You're basically saying, all right, I want you to just record the last 15, 30, 45, 50 minutes, whatever, uh, of my trip. And it will automatically recycle its, it, its space. Um, I don't think that the iPhone video is necessarily as good as the dedicated dash cams that you find. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, some of the other, uh, uh, features are kind of cool. Like I know that I think that the Garmin has like a wide angle lens and stuff like that, which is yeah. kind of cool to be able to get a little bit more situational awareness when you're, when you're looking at that video. But if you don't have the money for a dash cam right now, a, an app certainly is cheaper. Yeah, that's I did not even know about that. That that's a great recommendation and a great way maybe to test out the idea of of do you like this? Do you think it's important enough for you to do it? You're right. You're absolutely right about the wide angle lens. Um, these stretch out to close to 180, so they're pretty much capturing anything that's happening in your field of vision going forward. Um, some of them will re you can get them so they're recording GPS positions. You can get them so they are um, uh, they'll record the the, the in cabin audio. Um, which may or may not be good depending on the situation. Yeah. <laughs> it might be something you want to turn off. Um, but yeah, there are a lot of feature sets. So you, you need to do a little research as to what suits you and, and figure out why you're getting it, um, whether it's just a toy or protection, security, all those things. But yeah, thank you, Peter. I did not, did not know about that. I'll make sure we have a link in the show notes to that as well. You're welcome. So four times four is 16. So we've given people 16 and maybe one or two extra uh, great ideas here to kick off their holiday shopping. Guys, thank you so much. A lot of cool stuff. Thank you.
Thank you. So one more time, just to go around, um, Robert, if you'll tell us where we can find you and how we can contact you if people want to uh, follow up and, and get more information on your picks. All righty, great. I am Robert underscore Carter, C-A-R-T-E-R, on Twitter. The uh, website for the Tech Doctor podcast is dr-carter.com, drcarter.com. And that's probably the best way to keep up with me. Great. It's good to have you as always. Thank you, Chuck. It's a pleasure to be here. Peter, I need to formally apologize to you because the last time you were here and I put out the announcement on, on Twitter, I left out the H in your Twitter handle. So I'm <laughs> terribly sorry. It will not happen again. Thank you, Chuck. <laughs> uh, so, yes, you can find me on Twitter at Flarg, F-L-A-R-G-H. Um, and uh, I have my own website at peter-cohen.com. And uh, you can also read uh, the Backblaze blog at backblaze, B-A-C-K-B-L-A-Z-E dot com slash blog. Excellent. Thank you so much, my friend. Good to have you. Thank you very much for having me. Miss Kelly, you brightened the, the show up as always. Where can we find you? <laughs> Uh, you, like I said earlier, you can occasionally find me over at MacObserver.com, and you can find me on Twitter as Verso. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. So, folks, happy holidays to you. Uh, this is the first. We're going to do a number of these to help you with uh, your shopping and to help empty our bank accounts. I'm Chuck Joyner. This is the Mac Jury on Mac Voices. We will be back again soon. Thanks for watching. Visit MacVoices.com for show notes, links to subscribe, and to connect with Chuck on Twitter, Google+, Facebook, YouTube, Vimeo, SoundCloud, the Mac Voices blog, the Mac Voices Dispatch, our weekly newsletter, and on Mac Voices Magazine, free on Flipboard that helps you do more with your Apple tech. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media at BackbeatMedia.com. Bandwidth provided by Cashfly at Cashfly.com.